Many people have asked me to put this out on the web. It's the single best insight I think I have gleaned over the past 10 years of private practice. Uh, it can change the way you look at your client base, and it's a lot of fun to do as well. So here we go. Uh, the last time I did this was at our national uh, write-up accounting convention in uh, Baltimore, and they liked it so much they've asked me to do it again next year in San Jose. Out in California. So here we go. Uh, uh, get a piece of paper out and hold it longitudinally and on that piece of paper write three columns. And here are the columns. First one is going to be in all capital letters CAP, C, A, P. Your middle column is undecided. That could be caps and lowercase. That's not the main thing. The right hand column is probably the most fun. This is hoo ha. H U H A in all caps. And you'll see what these are for in just a moment. Now, under the cap column, write in the name of one of your good clients, uh, whatever, however you define good to be. Probably one of the most profitable, one of the most fun, one of the most responsive, just one of your good clients. Undecided should be one of the, uh, the name of one of the clients that is not of this cap quality, these good ones, but maybe with a little work on your part and on their part, they could be made to become a cap client. They're that middle of the road, intermediate quality. Hoo-ha, client from Hill. Write in the name of one of your worst ones, wherever you define that to be. A cap means those clients that are cooperative, that are appreciative, and that pay you on time. And so I ask you in small business, is there ever a reason not to work for a cap client? Uh, these are especially in small business where interpersonal relationships count for so much and trust and mutual respect. The undecided clients are people either that are two of the three categories. Yeah, they're cooperative. Gosh, I appreciate what you do. And they're, uh, and they're, they're, they're appreciative and they're cooperative. They'll do what you ask them. But gosh, Bill, could you hold the check till next week? That kind of thing. Or maybe they're all three, but they're not real strong in any of the three categories. They are intermediate in terms of their quality. The hoo-ha client, uh, hoo-ha means head up is ass. And you know who I'm talking about. You know why. Now, let me ask you a question. Cap undecided hoo-ha. Where should you spend most of your time? Most people will tell me they should spend it on the cap clients because that's where the bread and butter is. But that's not what I think. I think you should spend your time on your undecided. Trying to make these people into cap clients. And if they can't, or if they won't be made into a cap, maybe you selectively terminate some of them. Let me ask you another question. Where do you spend far too much of your time? And the answer, of course, is on the hoo-hahs. And so the question is, why are you spending all your time on these hoo-hahs? And the answer generally is, well, they demand it. And, or, gosh, if I don't, they might be upset. Well, gosh, they're upset with you anyhow. Now, the, really, the question is, what makes a hoo-ha a hoo-ha? Why is that client, why is that customer, why is that person so difficult to deal with. And I think the answer is that in far too many cases, these hoo-hahs are playing according to a different set of rules than you and I are. Lots of times the, the discussion, the argument, the dispute turns around money. They're always asking you to cut your price. They're always trying, they're complaining about how much it costs. So, in some cases, and we've all done this, uh, they win. They win a major price concession from you. And so are they happy then? Generally they're not. Why is that? 
they're not happy because they're not trying to win price concessions any more than they're trying to win additional service or extended warranties or whatever it is that you do. They're trying to win and the only way they can make that, that they can win is to make you lose. They're playing a zero-sum game. Some, they're in, they've got you involved as an unwitting and unknowing actor in some kind of weird psychodrama where only they can win. And the only way they can win is to make you lose. Your only solution with a hoo-ha like that is to get rid of them. Raise the prices on them so high that they, possibly, they can't possibly afford to work for you. Then they'll go around telling everybody how high you are, how expensive you are, and there are worse things that can be said about me in this town than that, that I cost too much for these people. When I teach this to accountants, this is the um, Baltimore and the California things, we will add a second P, uh, P, and that stands for profitable because, of course, we would know these things. And you can understand the logic behind that is that um, certainly any organization must be profitable. It must have a, a positive cash flow over the long term where it won't survive. Of all the things that we do, I think this cap undecided hoo-ha has had a profound impact on our business. And I will put uh, my money where my mouth is. Uh, after we sign up a new accounting client, we will conduct a formal CAP review. And I tell them this um, with a formal uh, checklist. And if they, I don't feel that they are going to be CAP quality, I'll say so right then. I have terminated some CAP clients, or some, not CAP clients, I've terminated some hoo -hans, uh And I've arranged it so that a couple of hoo have terminated me doesn't matter to me either way. I only want these people. And if I can get rid of one of these, that frees up enough energy and fun and time for us to go out and get three of these. And that's how you build your business. Thank you so much.